What's up Lego builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios for another week of building Megito in Lego. You know how when you have a test at school or some kind of task at work and you know it's gonna suck so you just keep putting off and procrastinating working on it? That's how I've been feeling about the city portion of Megito. Ever since starting, it's just been a thorn in my side and not because I don't like city building. I've had a lot of fun placing the buildings and creating the cityscape. It's all because of placement. The back of the mock was squished up against a wall, cutting off any easy access to the interior where the foundations are. And I had to strain my back reaching over the giant rock wall. Even the side of the city I've been working on wasn't very fun because I was squished in a tiny little corner and couldn't really film what I was building. All that compounded together made me avoid working on the city as much as I could. But all that changes today. As you know, I've moved the mock to a new studio and now I have all the room in the world to build and film and I am hungry for some city progress. Oh, and I'm building a giant tridroid or something like that. All that being said, if you're excited for some more Megito action, don't forget to execute order 66 on that like button and let's get building. To start, I need to build a bunch of those foundation pillars that will hold up the city. I should only need three since some of the others I already put in will help hold up the middle section. So far, the first section I put in has held up really well. There's been little to no breaking and I'm able to push plate and brick down easily. The only adjustment I'm going to make to the original design is adding extra support pillars in between the bigger ones. I was nervous that because the rock wall is so tall I wouldn't have enough filler brick to build all the pillars I need but I guess after Utapau and Kato Nemoidia my filler brick is more than prepared for a small mountain like this. Now that those are in I need to level out the front of the rock wall so it's all at the same height. It's mostly there I just need to fill in this big gap. It's so exciting being this close to finishing the rock work. For a while I felt like it would never end. There will be more in the city as I keep building those smaller plateau walls, but honestly, I enjoy doing those. They're small and easy, so I can knock them out pretty fast. Plus, I can incorporate other builds into them like stairs, roads, and statues. I really enjoy building rock work. It's just when I have to build it at such a large scale and not really have anything else to work into it that I get bored. But you have to admit, looking at a finished mountainside is super satisfying. I also need to fill in behind the rock work so I can have a place to connect supports to the wall. Now I need to build up everything along this wall so it's all at the same height as the middle section. That way when I go to put the plate down, I don't cover up where the stairs will need to be. Because they're at a shallower angle than the rock wall, the stairs and road reach deeper into the middle section. I built a little platform behind the stairs so I could have something for them to sit on. Then I just have to build up the side walls around them until everything was at the right height. Having both paths at a shallower angle than the rock work and cut so far into the middle will make placing the base plates more complicated but I didn't want these access points to be too steep and short for minifigs and vehicles. Everything's good to go. I'm hoping to still have enough room to put a couple of houses between the stairs and path, but I won't know until the plates are in and the city's laid out, so let's continue. Having the rock wall all be at the same height was really important because part of the base plates and city rest on it, and I'm running long rods of brick on top of the support pillars, which all needs to connect to the mountain at the same height. This is why tall mocks are so complicated. You have builds super high up in the air that need to connect to each other, but you can't just count how many bricks tall they are because when when your mock gets to a certain size, the tables sag and bend under the weight, which caused things that were built at the same height to not actually be at the same height. It's a really rage inducing process building like this. But one thing I use to help get things on the same plane is this torpedo level. It's small enough to fit on most builds and helps me get a more precise level than just counting brick heights. And I can finally add those mysterious base plates you've been hearing about all episode. I spaced all the support rods 16 studs apart so I can put these 16 by 16 plates on top. These are my preferred piece when building a foundation because they're the widest plate Lego makes so I can span the biggest distance possible with them and use as few supports underneath as possible. But being plates, they are pretty bendy and a little flimsy, so I really wish I could use the 16 by 16 bricks, but those are way out of my price range. Bruh. I don't want the bright green fronts of the plate exposed on the front of the mountain, so they're set back a few studs so I could add a layer of gray and white plate in front. Here's a beautiful blank Lego canvas ready to paint a city on. But before I can lay out and build, I need to figure out where this bridge meets up with the mountain so I can put the road that connects to it in the right spot. This is something I don't wanna guess or eyeball because if these two are off by even a couple of studs, I'm in big trouble. I built a strip of bridge that spanned the gap and showed me where the right side will hit the mountain. I dropped a marker, then measured the bridge width and used the high-tech method of counting studs to figure out where the other side will be. I also built a strip of plate that was the right width to double check myself and honestly, I should have just gone with that from the beginning. I'm gonna have a massive road cutting through the middle section with ample room for vehicles to traverse it, but I didn't realize it was gonna be this wide, so fitting houses by it is gonna be a real challenge, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I don't know about you, but I need a break from all this foundation work, so I'm gonna work on the tridroid. I'm very pleased with how smoothly this thing's come together. The legs look 
look great and I'm building the final one so I can see how big of a footprint it'll be when on the bridge and if it can stand on its own. The last big challenge I have is building the head. It's round and anyone who's built with Lego knows that's not an easy shape to build. The two options I'm considering are a brick built one similar to this or using the Lego Microplanet. The pros of the Microplanet are it's a perfect sphere and I wouldn't have to build anything and it being a molded piece it looks very smooth and realistic. The Death Star and Coruscant are probably closest to the colors I would need. The problem with them is they come in a fixed size that might not scale properly with the legs I built. This is where the brick built head comes in handy. While not as smooth or as finished looking I could build it to any scale I need and with all the studs it might be easier to connect guns and legs to this design. Let me know in the comments which one you think I should go with. This is looking more like a mountain city by the day. I'm really happy with how the foundation turned out. It's very strong and doesn't have any major weak points. I like having this open back as well because I can stick my hand under the mock and support wherever I'm building and easily fix any spots that break. On a side note, I think this middle portion of supports looks really cool. The extra layer of small towers on top makes this look more intricate and complicated than the first section. While I'm back here, I wanted to answer a question I get asked a lot. Why not use Duplo for the filler portions of your builds? One Duplo brick is equal to like three or four bricks stacked on top of each other, I think. So you can build the same height while using Using much fewer bricks and it's pretty cheap. I don't use it for a couple of reasons though. The main one is that all this was free. I had all this brick already and one thing I try to do to keep the costs of these mocks as low as possible is reuse parts from my collection. So I'd have to spend valuable resources buying Duplo to build something I could just build for free. The second reason is I don't really like the way it looks. I prefer to work with just Lego parts and I know technically it's the same company but they look different to each other and I like the challenge of only building with smaller Lego bricks and it just looks better in my opinion. The main road coming up from the bridge is going to take up most of the space on this middle plateau. Those two dark tan slopes represent how wide it's going to be and I don't want to have a big flat empty section in the middle of the city so I'm going to build a droid command post at the back of the road to take up space. It'll have your typical command station stuff like hollow tables, crates, and barrier walls. The main focus will be a J1 proton cannon raining down artillery fire on the advancing clones. I couldn't find mine so I had to use this AV7 as a placeholder. Hopefully all this will make up for the lack of houses in the middle. I do have just enough space for some houses on this side of the road which will help add some height, but this one sits really close to the other house on the lower plateau. However, I don't think it'll be a big deal. Let me know in the comments if you think they're too close together. I made a mistake when laying out the bridge support pillars, so now it doesn't hit the center of this middle plateau, which sucks because now one side of the middle plateau doesn't really have any space for buildings because the rock wall leading up to the last plateau will be right here next to the road. But now that I think about it, this might be a good thing because the other side of the road is now wider and has just enough space for some buildings. Whereas if I had gone through the exact same center of the mock, there might not have been space on either side of the road for buildings. Plus over here, you can see a few extra studs wouldn't have made much of a difference. Dang, I got pretty lucky with that. The tri-droid is looking so good. As of right now, it can stand on its own, although once the head goes on, it'll probably be too top heavy. It fits very nicely within the edges of the bridge and doesn't look awkward or too big, but still towers over everything else on the battlefield. But speaking of vehicles, I have a problem. I built this awesome walking artillery cannon designed by Parsival, and my plan was to stick it on the back end of the bridge, basically combating the J1 proton cannon over on the droid side. But now that more of the bridge is in, I've started to map out where I want everything to go. And if I have the cannon here, the UTAT is going to have to go here in front of it, basically taking up most of the bridge space, which will push the tri-droid and separatist forces off the bridge. I wanted the battle to be taking place on the bridge because that's more accurate to the scene and will look cooler in my opinion. Plus the UTAT now covers up the cool craters I'm going to have on the ground. So I think I have to find a new home for this guy or cut him from the mock, which is unfortunate. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on where I could put this. I've been really focused on getting more of the foundations built and the city laid out, but I want to switch gears for a bit and do some finish work, like tile, plate, and plants. Now, Megiddo is a cold, frigid planet, but from the glimpses I've gotten, it doesn't seem as desolate as Hoth. Plus, the mere existence of such massive high-tech city shows this place must be somewhat hospitable and capable of throwing stuff. So, I came up with some custom trees that could be flown in or local to the planet. I wanted to stick to that feudal Japan vibe I've been basing the city off of, so that's why I went with colors that would look similar to the iconic cherry blossoms. I'm including trees for a couple reasons. First, I love plants and nature, so I'll take any chance I can get to squeeze some flora into a build. And the second reason was, I knew this mock had a similar color palette to Coruscant, so it really needed some color. On top of that, I want to add little patches of snow like what I've been doing on the bridges. In the front by the guard wall, I have some more space, so I decided to add a little snow-tipped rock feature just to break up the terrain. And next to that, there'll be a bench. Nothing too crazy, but come on, it's Megito. I could add water fountains or rock gardens, but who's going to be chilling out here in the cold? 
I'm trying to fill up as much open space between the buildings as possible, so on the side of this water treatment plant, I'm adding some random storage silos to hold Kool-Aid, death sticks, or everyone's favorite drink, blue milk. I've been putting off tiling the path because I'm using ingot tiles and I still haven't decided what kind of pattern I want, but I wanted to just get started, so I went with a simple alternating ingot pattern. I'm doing a base color scheme of light bluish gray and dark bluish gray with some miscolored ones thrown in and some white ones to represent snow. I'm thinking of having most of the city be abandoned, but I'm also adding a few jumper plates in case I want some people running around on the path. The last thing I'm going to do is plate and tile underneath this weird power generator and make a small platform for it. I love how the city is looking. It's so detailed and has all kinds of different pieces and techniques on display. This is also a good example that you don't need anything crazy to make a cool looking build. I have tile, little trees, ingots, and round plates, but all these simple components combined make this setup look more realistic and complicated. Placement is also important, like how I framed the doorway with the two planter boxes of trees, and the color combo of white, gray, and red help keep a neutral color palette but still have a sense of color and vibrance. Sometimes a neutral base with small pops of color looks better than cramming as much color as you can into a mock. Plus, picking things that are going to be the pops of color can help highlight and guide people to certain parts of the mock. I was a little worried about how the road was going to turn out because of the pattern I picked, but I think it looks great, especially with the white ingot pieces. Now all I need to do is add the patches of snow and the last building with its front yard. I was really hungry for some progress this week and boy did I eat. I've been pacing myself building wise over the past few updates, so it felt good to just unleash myself and get as much building as I wanted done. I feel like I finally have the city all figured out and I can get really serious and hopefully have it done minus the finishing touches in a few weeks. Cause I'm hoping to have Megito done by the end of April, which gives me only six more updates to work on. Next week, I wanna get the rest of the main bridge built and start wiring it with lights because I am really behind on that. But that wraps up this update. Don't forget to let me know what you thought about everything down below in the comments and I will catch you next time but until then happy building